Hey guys, it's Lane with WinRTSource.com. Should you install the Windows 10 technical preview on your device? We're going to take a look at that. So before you install the January technical preview of Windows 10, there are a few things that you'll want to know, particularly if you tend to use your device with a touch screen. So what exactly is missing? Well, I want to talk about a couple of desktop features first off. So you can see I have a couple of programs running here. And I want to point out that these programs are kind of tasking on the hardware. We're recording audio and the video, the, uh, the uh, screen capture right here. So this is a little bit tasking on the hardware. So you'll see some things that are slower than normal. For instance, when I open the start menu, this has never taken this much time before. Um, so just be aware of that. There's some slowness here that you wouldn't actually see. This would normally happen instantly. So secondly, when you go to, you can add multiple desktops. We've uh, seen that before. Um, when you're on another desktop though, I would like to be able to drag one of these programs and move it to another desktop. Right now, that's not possible. The way you have to do that is you right click, hit move, and then desktop two, and that moves it. So I'd really like to be able to drag and drop. That would make things a lot, uh, a lot easier. So on to touch. What if you're using this device on touch? Well, the way you would activate that is on a Surface Pro 3, for instance, if I disconnect the keyboard, which I've just done, it asks, do you want to enter tablet mode? You say yes, and then it does that. Again, this is running very slow. Uh, and it has nothing to do with the Windows 10 preview. It's just this very tasking software. So now that we're in touch mode, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back just cause it's easier for recording. I'll switch back real quick here. So yeah, we'll exit tablet mode. So regardless of whether you're in tablet mode or regular desktop mode, there are a few apps that are missing that you would normally want to be able to use on a touch screen. So, for instance here, there is no way to browse the internet with a internet browser that's actually designed for touch. So this is Internet Explorer 11. Now it works okay with a touch screen, but the immersive version of this, the modern or metro version of this uh, Internet Explorer, are it's gone. It's not in the Windows 10 technical preview, at least at this point. I think that's because they're transitioning to replacing this with uh, Project Spartan. So that's missing. So that means you're gonna have to deal with maybe some items that are harder to click with your fingers. Secondly, if you need to browse the File Explorer, the OneDrive version that you would use with Touch is it's gone and you cannot install it from the store. It's not in the store. So that's kind of a bummer as well. Next, the charms bar. The charms bar is not here. Now when you swipe in from the right, you get the action center. I do like the action center. I like the notifications that you get there. That all works pretty well. But the problem with this is that some of the settings from the charms bar are missing. So search, for instance, that's now down here. That's Cortana. That's how you would use search. But also, if I want to change the brightness on my display, so you would think you'd tap the display right here, but that just takes you to the modern settings application, which does not have a brightness slider. If you want to change the brightness, you have to actually go to the control panel, which as you know, is not designed for touch. So that can be quite a bit harder to change your brightness. It's gonna take a few steps. Next is modern app switching. So in the past, when you'd swipe in from the right side, you would see you'd actually just cycle through your apps. Now, swipe in from the left and you're going to get this view, which is, I mean, it's pretty nice. It's, uh, it's very quick. I like the little animation that it does there. So it's not bad, but it's, it's different and it's going to take some getting used to. Next, there are just a few niceties that we used to have uh, in Windows 8.1 that are, that are missing here that make it a little bit more difficult to use as a, as a tablet. For instance, when you're in tablet mode, you can use desktop apps. Let me go ahead and show you this. So you can use desktop apps like this, 
but you can't stack them. What I mean by that is, for instance, if I hit this reduce down button or restore down, nothing happens. I cannot stack this. I have two choices, uh, full screen or the split mode. So I can, or snap. So I got full screen or I can snap it to either side. And also missing, let me go ahead and create an Internet Explorer window just to show you this as well. So now resize is here. If I tap this, see if I can get it to work. Yeah, I can't get this to work for some reason. Normally you'd be able to resize just by using just the same way you would in Windows 8.1. You'd kind of grab the handle right there and then resize it and it would automatically resize the other app as well. So that still works. I'm not sure why it's not working with these two apps, but normally it would, especially with the Metro apps. I know it does work, but you cannot snap three apps at once, only two. So depending on the size of your device, that wouldn't have been something you could do anyway. But, um, you know, on the Surface Pro 3, certainly you could have three, even four apps stacked next to each other. So that is missing. Okay, next is edge gestures with the mouse. So in Windows 8.1, if you moused up to the top left corner and then came down, you would see the app switcher. So you'd see the different apps that you had open. To me, that was really quick. I could just go like that and I'd see the apps. It'd be really fast. Now you have to kind of hunt for the task view. So you can see it can take multiple clicks to see all of the apps that you have open. That's, that's too many clicks for me. I want to just be able to, you know, quickly switch, even with the mouse or, or, or the keyboard. You can, of course, do Alt-Tab. Uh, so maybe this is just my personal opinion. Maybe it just will take some time to do. But I, you know, at this point, I prefer it the old way. And again, if you are using it with your finger, you're going to, it's going to be kind of a jarring experience coming from Windows 8.1. Next, I don't know if this is just me, but when you go to the start screen, these apps that are smaller, these small icons, compared to Windows 8.1 for some reason, they look very pixelated. So they're not as detailed as they were before. I'm not sure if there's something wrong with the software. I, I, I don't know, it just, it doesn't look as good, as sharp as it did in Windows 8.1. So that's kind of strange. When you're using Windows 10 technical preview, in desktop mode. We've seen in other uh, previous builds of the technical preview and then some leaked builds that you'd be able to resize the start menu. So you can maximize it. So this is full screen. This is in the desktop mode, not the tablet mode. You can restore it. And again, this would not normally take this long, but I cannot expand it to make the start menu wider. So your only choice at this point in the technical preview is to have it this size and shape and then you scroll vertically. And then this button here, all apps, this is a pretty small target, especially let's say you were using it in tablet mode. If you want to see all the apps, you have to really be sharp and just tap that little target right there. I I've easily ended up hitting the search box instead or one of the recently added apps instead of the all apps. So that's not quite quick enough. And then there is not a jump menu like in Windows Phone where you can just tap the C and, it will, and then it'll show you the alphabet and you can jump to uh, a different letter. That doesn't exist in the technical preview at this point. But here's the good news. Microsoft has introduced some UI elements to make touch better and less of a jarring transition for mouse and keyboard users. So if you typically use this device with mouse and keyboard, uh, this will be easier to use to you than was Windows 8.1. So for instance, on the start menu, when you press and hold on an item, let's say the Photos app, you now get these handy little shortcuts that you can tap on. This looks a lot more like it did in Windows Phone 8.1. So you can tap this and this gives you the sort of right click menu that you'd get with the mouse. And then if you tap on a menu that can expand. It just shows you the other items right there. It's very easy to use. And then unpinning something is as easy as just tapping the unpin button. Second, Microsoft is designing new apps that will be easy to use with touch. For instance, the new Office apps. 
and within the technical preview they have actually installed a new version of OneNote. So for instance this is the new version of OneNote. You can see that it does have this uh, the nice ribbon interface that you see on the current desktop version of OneNote and then even the iPhone and iPad versions of OneNote that uh, are available right now. So this interface is uh, a little bit easier to use, a lot more like the desktop version. Microsoft has also added a couple of other apps. The Photos app, this is the new one that they talked about on January 21st. They have also added a new calculator app and a new Maps app. That's what this looks like. Next, some desktop apps now automatically pop up the keyboard when you tap your finger into an empty field. So you don't have to find the keyboard icon in the uh, taskbar there. And then also, if you tap here, you can actually now undock the keyboard and move that around. And then also, there is WordFlow style predictions like you get on Windows Phone. Um, there is no gesture typing at this point. I think that might conflict with the nice feature that Microsoft has here to easily get to different accents and numbers and things like that. So in summary, if you're someone who typically likes to use their device with the touch screen, either completely in tablet mode or just augment their desktop experience by reaching up and tapping with their fingers, it's going to it's going to be a little bit more difficult to use at this point, or at least it will take some getting used to. Again, this is not the final build. Things will change and will get better over time. Um, but at this point, I would suggest staying on Windows 8.1 if you really like to use, for instance, your Surface Pro 3 as a tablet. Thanks very much for watching, guys. You can find more information on Windows 10 at winrtsource.com.